Okay, it's Tuesday again, Tuesday as usual, and time for another tag. It's the end of Horror Mayhem, so I thought I would wrap up the month, say farewell to an enjoyable month of horror by doing the tag that MJ brought up last week, which is called, I believe it's called, The Haunted Reads Horror Booktube Tag. Um, the tag was originally created four years ago by uh, the book, the Bookubus. And MJ uh, revived it. I think it's got some great prompts here, so I'll just get right into it here. The first question, how and when did you get into horror? Well, I was always a monster kid. Had those Aurora models uh, that you could make of the different Universal Monsters. It was definitely the Universal Monsters. I think uh, the Wolfman uh, was one of the early ones I saw. I saw, as I've mentioned in other videos, uh, I saw a silent version of Phantom of the Opera free at the library when I was a kid. It really had a big effect on me. It, w it was from those old classic black and white movies. I didn't really see any newer horror movies very much. I remember seeing one of the Hammer Frankenstein movies, which at the time I didn't, I wasn't that excited about because it was mostly just uh, Peter Cushing uh, doing brain transplants I really wanted to see a monster it wasn't the, I can't remember which one it was it wasn't the best of the Hammer horror films although I appreciate it very much now that as, as I watch it as an adult but anyway it was definitely old black and white movies what was the first horror book you read well believe it or not I think it was Frankenstein by Mary Shelley in 7th grade and then the second one was Dracula by Bram Stoker in seventh grade. I read them because I, I remember who my teacher was. She told me I wasn't going to really like Frankenstein, that I would like Dracula a lot better. She was right at the time. Frankenstein's not a, a great read for a middle schooler. I mean, it's, it's a great novel and very important novel, better novel, I think, than Dracula, but uh, not as fast-paced, not as adventure-like, and so I think that appealed to me more. Trying to think, it seems odd that I would start with those really kind of, especially uh, Mary Shelley, pretty intense classic for a young person. Maybe they were abridged editions? I don't think so, though. I know I read, probably before that I had read... Uh, like a children's classic version of something or another, like The Hunchback of Notre Dame or something. I remember trying to find, after after the Phantom of the Opera, trying to find the book, which I couldn't find anywhere. That Even the libraries didn't have a translation of it or anything. That was one of my first big disappointments as a reader, not being able to find the Phantom of the Opera, which I still haven't read. I still have not read that book. I, I don't think it's probably considered a very readable book, considering how rare it is even today. Of course, you can get everything today, but I don't think many people read the actual book, The Phantom of the Opera. And I hope there is one, or this sounds really stupid. It was by Gaston Leroux or something? Anyway. I didn't read a lot of horror after that until I got to... until my parents... my mom had some Stephen King books. I think the first one I read of those was... Salem's Lot because it was about about vampires and I really liked that. I thought it was very it was revelatory in a way because well not even in a way it was revelatory to me because it was it was taking place in a town that was very much like mine and and you know every as I said everything I'd read before was you know set in. Uh, old times and Europe and that and you could just have a story about vampires in our own time and in, in, in a town like mine and and that's why I liked uh, uh, Night Shift his his Stephen King's first collection as well I read that about the same time so those were the first contemporary horror films I read I uh, horror movies just keep wanting to say movies. I was really into horror movies. I was into science fiction 
books and horror movies. But those are the really the first uh, books I read. Okay, what was okay number three? What? So I didn't read any because this is I'm these were after my time, so I didn't read any Goosebumps or anything like that that get that a lot of people get into horror from. Anyway, number three, what horror related goodness can we expect from your channel? Well, you won't uh, next year, I guess you'll you can hear me talk about the books I didn't get to this year. Uh, I don't read a lot of horror right now. I had that's why I had so much piled up on my Kindle. I guess I'd been backing up from a time when I was buying and reading a lot of it. But you never know. I might slip stuff in here and there. I'm, I'm ready to move on to another genre for a while. Uh, do you have any favorite themes or subgenres within horror? I like short fiction. As I've talked about uh, very many times on this channel, some of my favorite horror writers are almost exclusively short fiction, like Thomas Ligotti, Poe, Lovecraft, I like that cosmic horror kind of stuff. Or novellas. Um, novellas seem to be very popular among like small press, small publishers these days for horror. It's a, it's a great length for horror, you know, 100 pages, 80 pages, something like that. Uh, themes. Yeah, that's cosmic horror. I like, I'm kind of in the mood for like old fashioned horror. I like ghost stories and things like that, classic ones, Victorian style ones, or updates of them. You know, I guess there's no favorites because I'll, I'll pick anything really. Name an underrated horror novel or author. It's underrated is always tough because I'm not that widely read that I know that I can find somebody and say they're underrated. Yeah, I can't say Thomas Ligotti. He has a, there's a Penguin edition of Thomas Ligotti. He's hardly underrated. Um, a lesser known, sure. There's a lot of those. I would say, because I don't think many people are reading them right now, and it doesn't take very long to read them, it would be Ira Levin who wrote three or four things that definitely qualify as horror. There's, of course, the uh, Rosemary's Baby and Stepford Wives, science fiction horror, and Sliver, which is like science fiction techno uh, thriller, uh, sleazeball horror, and Son of Rosemary, which is, a, like, is, which is like apocalyptic horror, but very meta, meta fictional. But how can you say that the author of Rosemary's Baby is underrated? I think he's just not as read as much as, as he could be now, but it could be just people go through his books so fast because his books are very easy to read. They go very quick and he didn't write that many of them. Um, name an overrated horror novel or author. Well, here I could get in a lot of trouble. I would say, Stephen King can be overrated because uh, I think he's written a, a lot of weaker things. I was praising him before. I think his early early stuff is much better. A lot of the stuff he writes isn't horror, though, and it's kind of a cliche to, to bag on uh, Stephen King anyway. I, mean, I think of books like Duma Key or insomnia and just these in, interminable tomes and, and some that people even like like 11 22 63 and under the dome uh, which those two i happen to read to try and really give him another chance and under the dome is like you know I, when i read under the dome it's kind of i i feel how uh, people in scientology m must must feel when they when they pay you know to get all the way up to the top level of Scientology and they find out about Xenu. That's how I felt about the conclusion of Under the Dome. Like that's that's the reason, which is why they jettisoned that from the TV series. I think, as far as I know, they did. I didn't watch the whole series, but so it's I can't say he's overrated because a lot of people don't like Stephen King. 
I guess my hottest take would be the most overrated writer, in my opinion, in all the genres is Neil Gaiman. And he wrote horror early on, especially, the, you know, the Sandman stories and and a, a lot of short stories that are allegedly horror. I really can't tell what most of his stuff is, is supposed to be about. I, I would love somebody to explain in a sentence what the book Stardust is about um, and, not, and not just fall into, you know, listing all the incidents that happen in that, that book. Uh, never, never wears kind of inter interesting concept, and I guess that's more horror related. American Gods, I thought, uh, this is the dumbest book I've ever read. Uh, but, but it's not horror; it's uh, contemporary fantasy. But you've got this setup where these 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 gods. The idea is these, and this for you know to his credit, this one has an easy to explain concept at least that these these gods from Europe and other countries sort of follow their people to the United States uh, when they emigrate so you know it starts out this this guy uh, is wa walking along the road in Texas because he just got uh, let out of prison for manslaughter he was an alcoholic and he killed somebody with his car ve vehicular manslaughter and so this limo pulls up and it's Odin in the limo and he wants to hire this guy to uh, do an ad campaign to promote uh, the uh, the Norse gods because he feels they don't get their their due. And already the it books it's so much trouble for me because first of all, he's this Odin is looking for publicity, right? This isn't a secret plan, and so he can't just go to a, he doesn't go to a an ad agency in in New York and Madison Avenue. He he finds a person by the side of the road who's who's ruined his career and he's like why is he picking him to do the publicity when he wants is what's the whole point of of, of uh, these gods wanting to do this in like the 80s or the 90s whenever this book came out you know instead of like doing it when advertising came out in the 50s another big problem is the the Scandinavians who emigrated to the United States did so in the 1800s and whatever time, and none of those people were pagans. They were Christians. All the people who de emigrated to Europe from from Europe to the United States were already Christians. So their gods were already forgotten. Those old gods that we're supposed to think are following uh, their their uh, people to, to the United States were already uh, uh, abandoned by those people. It's it's. Freaking nonsense! A whole stupid book, and it makes me mad because people like it so much. Uh, you know, and why do the gods? Why do they have to move to to America? Why you know? Why aren't they still? You know, there's still Scandinavians in Scandinavia. There's still Icelanders in Iceland. This dumb, dumb idea. Just anyway. Uh, not even a horror book, but I had to you know slip my Neil Neil Gaiman hate in there some somewhere on my channel. Recommend three of your favorite horror novels. Ooh, that's going to be tough. I should have thought about that one before. Well, I definitely want to recommend, again, as I've done it before, that Elizabeth Engstrom book called uh, When Darkness Loves Us, which one of the best books I read this year, or if not the best book. I also enjoyed Fritz Leiber's book, um, Our Lady of Darkness, Pretty much any book with the word darkness in it, I recommend. What else uh, do I really like? I'm. Let me look ahead here. Uh, I'm going to recommend some uh, someone who's new to the heart. Uh, anything by Stephen Graham Jones. He's a contemporary horror writer who's a novelist. I think his books are great. The ones that I've read, I didn't read any for this current challenge. I haven't read all of them, but I've read uh, a few of them. Uh, he's an excellent writer, Stephen Graham Jones. Mm. Um, and other stuff, you know, just go back and watch my old horror videos. I recommended stuff here a lot. Did I do three yet? And uh, if you have not read Laird Barron or Thomas Ligotti, 
grab any of their short story collections. Especially, I think Laird Bear is probably more accessible. Thomas Ligotti is kind of um, esoteric. Those are two of my favorite writers, horror writers. But I also like older stuff too. Uh, Aikman, can't go wrong with him. Anyway, maybe maybe Robert Aikman's kind of a kind of underrated now. He's not though. See, none of the good people are underrated, which is good, as it should be. Okay, so that's a few. Okay, now we're up to number eight. Recommend a book for someone who is new to the horror genre. I had one for this. Well, I still think I might recommend Rosemary's Baby because it's not long. If you haven't seen the movie, uh, it's it's pretty. The movie's pretty accurate, so maybe not if you've already seen the movie. Uh, it's very well written. It's not gory. It's. It would really depend on, on what the, where the person is coming from. You know, I'd want more information about the person to recommend him. If it's somebody who likes a lot of action and violence and stuff like that, I might recommend uh, something else. If something, if it's somebody who's coming from more of a mainstream novel reading experience, I might recommend Rosemary's Baby again uh, for somebody who's like more of a, I don't know, like a Lee Child fan or something like that. I'd probably recommend Thomas Harris. Uh, someone who likes literary fiction. Uh, someone who likes, like, say, metafiction. Uh, literary fiction, I'd recommend Ligotti. Uh, uh, you know, you could go so many different ways. Okay, so I can't recommend just one book to anybody who's, who's new in the genre. Are there any book-to-film adaptions that you particularly loved or hated? I'm Okay, continuing my Rosemary's Baby theme, I did really like that that one. I did really like The Stepford Wives, the Catherine Ross one, the, the real one, not the parody with Nicole Kidman, directed by Frank Oz, where they, where they thought it would be funny. They thought this was a funny story where it's a very dark, very creepy uh, science fiction horror story. Um, okay, so I guess, well, I didn't actually see that, that, uh, that Nicole Kidman, Stepford Wives, I skipped it because I could tell from the preview I wasn't going to like it. Same as I skipped the Dark Shadows Tim Burton movie, although I heard that had some good stuff in it, so who knows, sometimes they're very deceptive in these trailers and they try and make you think the movie is dumber than it is okay, so any book or film adaptions you particularly loved or hated I really loved all the Hammer adaptions of Dracula and Frankenstein because I love Peter Cushing and I love, uh Christopher Lee so much. I mean, there's a lot of good adaptions in horror because, especially the classics, because they don't feel they have to be slavishly consistent with the story, um, you know, because movies and, and books, especially horror, is so much different. So, you know, I like The Shining no matter what Stephen King says. How do you discover new or new to you horror books? Well, I discover a lot of them from the publishers that I follow because I follow Valancourt Books who, who does the paperbacks from hell imprint and uh, there's a writer and publisher named Max Booth the third who publishes a newsletter I just I look at a lot of stuff from from small publishers from small horror publishers because they're very and there's another one called uh, I can't think of the name of it now Crystal Lake uh, publishing which I think is based in South Africa 
there's a lot of small publishers where they're really, really dedicated to the horror genre and getting new voices out there. So I actually, of any of any sort of publishing material in the world, I actually look at their stuff more than anything else. Their publicity material on Twitter and thing or Facebook or newsletters. And I get a lot of uh, recommendations just from what people are talking about on YouTube, of course, which is the great thing about this corner of BookTube where people talk about... Uh, I don't want to say esoteric books, but just, you know, the people I follow and the people you follow, if you're watching this channel probably, are, are interested in a lot of different things and... and and you know throughout the history of publishing and, and not just what's coming out this year that everybody's supposed to read this year anyway so that's probably how i find things just through just through word of mouth just like we always have you know through people's videos and things and also, another another good thing is uh, a lot of books have you know in the acknowledgments or the or the after, especially if it's a a book of uh, short stories, a lot of times the author will have a, a bit in there where they'll talk about their influences. So if I like a writer, I like to follow their influences. Thomas Ligotti has just like it's kind of a tradition that was started by Lovecraft with uh, his long essay on. Uh, supernatural fiction where he mentioned where he talked about all his influences and Thomas Ligotti has uh, one like that too and I found a lot of writers I really liked uh, through Ligotti's essay on horror and all the writers that influenced him I don't remember what that's in though how do you discover new what is the last horror book that you bought well I haven't bought any books in so long I, I don't I don't remember the last one I received was from the library, and that's uh, Red Dragon, which I, in my last video, I called Manhunter about 35 times. Um, so that's the last one I, I got, but I haven't bought one in a while. Um, anyway, because I've had so many unread ones for quite a while. What horror book is at the top of your wish list? Is well, is that for buying or for reading? Um, the Terror I wanted to read this month by Dan Simmons. Uh, a couple things stopped me is I wanted to really get as uh, through uh, a lot more short books, uh, you know, so I would have a, uh, some pr more progress on my Read What You Own challenge. And I am looking forward to reading that when I get a chance. And then the last one is uh, Tag Others. I Now, MJ, on her, she wrote, she tagged all her co-hosts in the Horror Mayhem program and all the creators participating in Horror Mayhem. And so I think anybody who's watching this video right now is interested in horror still and probably participated in Horror Mayhem Month. And if you haven't seen her video or any of the others that are probably going up today, consider this your opportunity to be tagged. And let us know what, let us know what you're reading. Let us know. Let me know what you thought of horror mayhem, other books you wish you had wanted. You know, what you wish you had time to read. Or I'm already looking forward in a way to next year's horror mayhem. It was stuff I set aside for that I mean I'm sure I'll read some others in between but we're all moving on to westerns and there are horror westerns too uh, there's some weird westerns that's, that's a great uh, uh, subgenre um, well it's an interesting sub subgenre let me put it that way it's a lot certain subgenres are better in theory than in execution and I really wish there was more as a person as a kid who really loved Jonah Hex the DC comic growing up I wish there was more weird westerns that were really good but I think it's kind of an esoteric genre you got first you got to have people who like westerns and you got people who like horror 
and you know those are not the the two most popular categories of of fiction and you, then you got to combine them and there's some people who don't like stuff combined so it probably makes sense that there aren't that many um horror westerns uh out there in the world but if anybody wants to write one anybody knows a good one other than by joe lansdale i've read those or yeah you know, i know there's a series called uh splatter westerns uh, uh, a small press publisher does a series called splatter westerns which are like splatter punk westerns which have great covers but i've looked at the samples of some of them and they haven't grabbed me but if anybody knows any other weird westerns and don't mention, please don't mention, uh, or don't bother to mention Cormac McCarthy. Uh, there's a pretty good horror western by by Jack Ketchum. Very, very violent. I think it's called The Crossings or The Crossing. Novella. Pretty old now. I don't know if it's in print. Just, it's like, it's like you take all, all the most violent sections, the, the blue duck sections from from uh, Lonesome Dove and just made that a whole book. Uh, you know, there are, and, um, and the, the, uh, John Williams' book, uh, Butcher's Crossing, is pretty pretty close to horror in some parts, and these books are so much better than, but they're, uh, they're, not straight up horror westerns. I don't like Bone Tomahawk or something like that, which was okay. The movie. I'm rambling. I'll talk to you later.